Hey everyone, welcome to another challenge Reddit video. This is the second pwn challenge called Bot. It was a easy challenge. We're gonna do a little ret to win. It had 186 solves and it was written by Kaipate. Kaifite? Uh, sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. It says, I made a bot to automatically answer all of your questions. We're given a netcat port, a docker file, libc, linker loader, bot.c, thank you, thank you, and the uh, bot binary. Um, when I first saw libc and the linker loader, I was uh, a little bit nervous this was going to be a heap exploit, but thankfully it's just a, a beginner challenge. So thankfully the source code is very small. Uh, we are given just one function, the main function. We're going to do some buffering. We're given an input uh, buffer of 64 bytes, a give flag variable to define volatile. Uh, this is just a C keyword that tells the compiler that uh, this memory or this address might, the memory for this address might change and you shouldn't do too much optimization to it. So just a compiler hint and it says, hi, how can I help? We have a gets, uh, same as the last challenge. We know that this is a vulnerable function. Um, and then it's, there's a bunch of funny little uh, string compares. If it's the flag, it says, no, no, give me the flag, gives us a loss. May I have the flag, not with that attitude. If we do, please, please give me the flag. It says, I'll consider it, it'll sleep for 15. And if this is true, it'll give us the flag and with the system call, otherwise they'll say no. And then also it says, sorry, I don't understand your question. Exit if it doesn't match any of these. So it would be cool to, we, we have a win condition right here. Um, we need give flag to be true, but the give flag isn't used anywhere in the binary. So that's definitely tricky. Actually, let me start this in the back too. We'll need that in a second. Um, so, but we also know that this gets function is uh, allows us to do buffer overflows. So it's possible that we could overflow this input buffer um, and get it to do something we want. And that is the solution. Basically, we're going to overflow uh, and write the value of RIP on the stack such that when it returns, it's going to jump uh, here and we'll just automatically get the flag and we'll skip all this stuff. One thing that's tricky though is we have to make sure uh, the, so that, that, uh, the overflow happens, or sorry, it jumps to the stack RIP variable only when the function exits. And the function does not exit on a exit call. So we need to be sure that we're actually hitting one of these options, like going down this path, so that this else condition isn't hit. Because if it hits else, it'll call exit one, and our function won't return, so we won't be able to over, or even if we overflow the stack, uh, it won't use that returning RIP variable. Cool, uh, so a couple things we want to check. Uh, first is check sec to see what protections are on the binary. So we can do make Ubuntu, let's do a check sec file. And this was called a uh, bot. And sweet, there's not too many protections. So there's partial rel row. So if we needed to, uh, we don't need it for this challenge, but we can overwrite entries in the global offset table. There's no canary, so we can easily do a buffer overflow. NX is enabled, so we're not going to be able to inject shellcode on the stack, but it doesn't look like we need it. And this is the key one for this challenge, no pi. So that means that uh, this source code, uh, when it's loaded into memory, are these instructions when they're loaded into memory, they'll be at a constant offset uh, in memory. So we know where they are. So if we do a buffer overflow and we're doing a ret to win, so we're overriding that RIP on the stack, we know what the address here is and we don't have to get any info leaks or anything. Cool, uh, so we have an idea of how to solve that. Um, first, we need to figure out what the address of our win condition is. Um, I use Ghidra for this, uh, so we're loading up Ghidra. Uh, let's go to functions, then here's main, and we can take a look. And this is what the decompiled view looks like. So we're looking for that system call. Um, do, 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 set vbuff, print no, print l, not with that attitude, sorry, please give me the flag. It is weird, it looks like it optimizes it away so we, we don't even see the system call. Um, but we can see it in assembly here, it's loading the flag and then calling system. So we need to load the flag and call system. So our win address is right here, 40129a. Um, otherwise we don't really need Ghidra for anything else. So we have our win address um, and I placed it here. Uh, I think I went up two instructions, so I also get the puts call. Um, cool, this is the solve script. Um, so it's written in Pwn tools. So uh, backing up again, uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to do a buffer overflow. We're gonna overflow the 64 uh, byte buffer. We're gonna make sure that we hit one of these conditions though. So our buffer overflow is gonna start with like, give me the flag and then a no byte character. Then we're gonna fill out the rest of the 64 uh, byte buffer. We're going to add another eight bytes for the RBP that's on the stack. And then the following eight bytes will be the RIP um, that we will use to return to here. So 
going through step by step, we'll, we'll do this in GDB too. If this is your first challenge, that was probably, or one of your first Pwn challenges, that was probably a lot. Um, but anyways, we're going to load the elf binary. Uh, we're going to get libc. We're going to start the process. This is just some context and debugging stuff. This is that win address we got from Ghidra. So we're going to run until that. So bot, oops, not got, bot. Hi, hi, how can I help? So we're going to load that in, or we're going to receive input until we get to that. Then we're going to do a cyclic bind. So the very first time I ran this, um, actually, let's just run it like this. I'll show how I actually uh, build these scripts. So I'm going to attach GDB onto the process. And then after the uh, this line, um, I'm going to say, give me the flag, no byte. And then I'm doing something called a pwn cyclic. And pwn cyclic will just generate a long string. It'll go like AAA, BAA, CAA, DAA, something like that. And so that you can use to calculate the offset of where RIP is. Um, so the reason you use this is tmux, python3, solve. Not, the stack isn't always aligned in a very consistent way. Oops. And you use this to figure out exactly what offset you need. All right, so you can kind of see the input there for a second. Uh, let's make this a little bit bigger. So this is the input we gave the, the challenge. So we said, give me the flag, and then AAA, BAA, CAA, DAA. And if we continue to the very end, um, we can see that it's going to exit here. And so this is where it's going to call that ret instruction, or it's going to try to load the next uh, stack frame off the stack. So this is the value that would be set to RIP, but it can't be set to RIP. But this is useful. We grab this string right here, and we place it here. You can see I already have it. And so now we know that it takes this many bytes before we get exactly where uh, the next function is going to be called or where it's going to return to. Um, so just a quick little check to speed up your instructions so you don't have to manually do it one by one. Before doing this, I used to like write dead beef and then I would guess like, oh, I think it's, you know, an offset times uh, like 64 plus eight or something like that. Um, so I do this and then I would see if RIP was set to dead beef, but it's just way easier to use this pwn cyclic. You don't have to do any guessing. Anyways, uh, now that we have the offset, uh, we can put everything together and actually uh, exploit the binary. So we're going to do give me the flag that'll put us down one of those conditions so we don't call exit. We do the null byte so the string compare works. Then we're going to send a bunch of garbage to fill out uh, the full buffer. And then at the very end, we're going to set the return address to our win address, which is that system call. And it should just work. Um, we can run it through GDB2. Actually, let's... Oops. So we're going to break on main. Then we're going to continue. And so we can see this is the disassembly. Here's the source code. Here's the stack. And here's our backtrace. So if we look at our backtrace, these are the stack frames. Um, we're currently here. And once we're done with this function, it's going to return to this address, the 07FF address. And if we look at the stack, let's do stack 20. Um, this is our, our base pointer. Right below our base pointer is the uh, stack pointer, sorry, the uh, um, our next address where we're going to return to. And we can see it's uh, that same address, that D90. And here's the D90. So our goal is to overwrite this with our win condition. So anyways, let's jump to the source code. So we're here, we're defining get flag. It's going to do puts, how can I help you? And then it's going to read our input. Um, and so somewhere here we should have received, yeah, hi, how can I help you? So next we're going to do gets. Like I said, this is the current stack frame. We can see after main returns, it's going to go here. But after our gets, which is a buffer overflow, we'll do a next. We can see our stack frames are all different. And instead of returning where it originally was going to return, it's going to return here. And so if we had examine, let's say, 10 instructions at this address, we can see it's going to load some variable, then it's going to call puts, then it's going to load some other string, and it's going to call system. So cool. So now when this program exits, instead of returning wherever it was going to return, it's now going to return to the win condition. And so we can just, oops, jump through. So next, it's going to puts LOL. And at the very end, it's going to do, here we're looking at the disassembly. We're going to see it's going to do a leave. And now it's going to do a ret. And so it's going to read that value on the top of the stack, which is that win condition address. It's going to pop that into RIP, single instruction. And so now we jumped into that uh, that hidden function, or that, that code that was previously inaccessible. Now we're going to print out, OK, here's your flag. I don't have a flag defined, but actually, let's just make one real quick. Uh, flag.txt, we win. And if we do a next, um, somewhere we should get a we win. There's the we win. And it's right here, it's being weird because it's spawning a new process. But yeah, a uh, very fun challenge. Oh, actually, let's just run it remote real quick just to show that it's working. Um, so we can change the solve script. We no longer want to attach GDB. Uh, everything else should be the same. We're going to, we don't need libc. We don't need the process, so we're just going to load it from remote. Uh, it's Python 3 solve. 
everything and there it is there's the flag so fun challenge um yep see ya